What's up guys, it's Connor, and today we're talking about a crucial part of music videos, which is effects. If you've been doing this for any length of time, you know that there is a ton of different effects, plugins, and overlays out there that you can buy to spice up your music videos, but that's not always in the budget. So today I just wanna give you a little bit of an introduction to music video effects, and all of it is gonna be done without using any plugins. It's all free. It's all things that are already in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm gonna show you a bunch of effects that are great for music videos in a really short amount of time here, but I don't want you to just copy and paste what I'm showing you here. This is about getting creative and just showing you what sort of options are out there, what kind of possibilities exist for free in your editor. Here we are in Premiere Pro and the first effect I'm gonna show you is a flash effect. So we're gonna to go to the effects tab and we're gonna type in Lumetri Color. We're gonna drag that onto our clip and then we're gonna click on the basic correction drop down menu. From here I'm gonna click on the stopwatch icon next to the whites and the stopwatch icon is gonna activate what's called keyframes. Now keyframes are what's going to allow us to automate changing of settings over time. It's already placed a keyframe here for me at zero so I'm gonna go over one frame and then I'm going to take the whites and put them all the way up to 150. Then I'm going to go over one more frame and set it back to zero. I'm going to repeat this a couple times at different intervals just so it's a little bit more interesting. We can play this back and now you can see we've got a little bit of a flash added which is just emphasizing a lot of the motion and hand movements that he's already doing. Our next effect is going to be a little bit more trippy. This is going to be a color shift effect and I have done a full really detailed tutorial on this and all the different possibilities with it so go and check that out if you haven't already. But I'll give you the quick rundown. Just type in HLS in your effects tab and we want to grab the color balance HLS effect and drag that onto our clip. We already talked about how keyframes work and we're going to use the same technique here. So I'm going to click on the hue stopwatch and I'm going to set it to zero to start and I'm going to move about halfway through this clip and then I'm going to set it to maybe somewhere around 260. And now we've got this really cool effect where the colors are swirling and shifting as the clip plays. Once again, I cover that in a lot more detail and some of the other extra possibilities in my full tutorial. Next up, I wanna add a little bit of a cool transition here. I've got these two clips and they're really nice clips, but I want them to flow together in a bit more of an interesting way. So I wanna add a bit of a flash of that second clip just before it actually cuts to that clip. I'm gonna start by dragging my second clip up to a separate layer. Then I'm gonna drag it back so that it starts a little bit sooner. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna grab the blade tool here, or you can press C as the shortcut to get to it. And I'm just gonna cut up every frame here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out every second clip. Now when we play it back, we've got this flashing effect that builds some anticipation going into the next shot. You can also do a similar effect as an actual effect on the clip rather than as a transition. So I'm gonna duplicate our first clip that we had here by holding Alt and clicking and dragging it to a new layer. Now I'm gonna take the scale and I'm gonna make it a lot more zoomed in. Next, I'm gonna change the opacity so that it acts more as an overlay rather than a completely separate shot. So I'm gonna click on the stopwatch icon here because I don't want the opacity to change over time. I want it to be consistent. We're gonna drag this down probably somewhere around 30%. I want it a little bit lower than the main clip so that you can tell which one is the real clip. Once again, you can chop it up to taste. This time I'm using larger chunks so that it's a little bit more visible. Now when you play the clip back, it's got this cool sort of overlay ghosting effect that comes on and off during this really intense section. While we're on the topic of duplicating our layers and creating these cool overlays, one of the things we can do with that overlay is mess with the speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that layer and I'm gonna repeat the same process as last time. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale it up and then I'm gonna lower the opacity to somewhere around 30% or so. You can also move that overlay around into a better place to make it a little bit more distinctive and stand out a bit more. Now I'm gonna right click it, click on speed slash duration and I'm gonna set it to maybe 150%. I'm gonna shorten this clip a bit and find a good place for it, probably somewhere near the beginning where the vocals start. And if I play that back, he starts into the vocals and then we've got this brief flash of him doing those same vocals, but faster, which adds a lot of energy to the clip. You can even duplicate this a little bit so it's not just a, a standalone effect. It's got a little bit of a rhythm to it. So we can create a couple duplicates and now we've got this cool effect 
of intensity that pops in and out while he's doing this super fast vocal section. This next one is called the freeze frame effect or the snapshot. I like to duplicate the layer and this time I'm just gonna take a section that I feel deserves a little bit more emphasis. So maybe when the vocalist here, he starts counting on his hands. So maybe that first count right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut right there. I'm gonna zoom in and just cut out that single frame. So we're gonna shorten that to just one frame. And now I'm gonna right click it, go to speed slash duration again. But this time I'm gonna type in 0.1. It's gonna make it so slow that it's just a static shot. So when I scroll through here, you can see nothing's changing. I'm gonna shorten that somewhere around a couple seconds or so. And now I'm gonna set the blend mode to screen. By setting it to screen, it's gonna make the whole image a lot brighter as long as that second layer is on top. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to type in dissolve into the effects and we're gonna add a cross dissolve so that it sort of fades out over time. Playing it back, you can see the freeze frame and it almost looks like he's getting his picture taken with like a Polaroid camera or something while he's performing. We have this nice flash, we have this ghost effect that hangs around and it just adds a little bit of punch to a simple little movement that he's doing and it brings attention to it. All right, the last effect I'm gonna show you is once again one that I've done a really detailed tutorial on and I'll show you all the possibilities that it has so check that out if you haven't already, but this is going to be a ghosting or echo effect. Go to the effects tab and type in echo and right away we're just going to drag it onto our clip and we're going to see a difference as soon as we add it. When you press play, now there's this sort of smearing effect. It's a little delayed and a little bit trippy looking. I'm going to emphasize this a little bit more by changing the echo time. So I'm going to subtract a little bit more and as I subtract and lower this it's going to make the delay between those two images the real image and the ghost even bigger so that the effect is a lot more drastic. I think I've got the echo time where I like it where there's enough separation between the two images but I don't like that it's making everything super bright kind of like the last effect when we set it to screen mode. So I'm going to set it to minimum which is in my opinion the most natural blend mode where it's just going to look like two of the same image without adjusting the brightness or anything like that. Playing that back you can see it's this really cool trippy effect that works really well if you want to add some interesting motion or you just want to add something that really pops off screen and really grabs your attention. The more motion that's happening in the shot, the more extreme this effect is going to look and the more noticeable it'll be. But as you can see, it works really well on some simple movement too, just tweaking the echo time a little bit to make sure that there's a nice distinct image between the two. Now, I don't wanna to throw too much at you, but in addition to all the things that we're talking about here, you can edit any of them by using mass to get a little bit more creative. So maybe with this flash effect, let's say I only want it to happen on the vocalist and not the entire frame. Well, I can click on this second clip and go up to opacity. And here I'm gonna click on this circle to create a circular mask. Now you can see that it's only showing the area that's gonna be affected by it. So I can click and drag this however I want. And then I'm gonna feather it out so that the edges aren't so rigid. They're a little bit more natural looking. So now if I play this back, it's only gonna show up on him. It gives him a little bit of pop. Or if I wanna do the complete opposite, I can go to that same mask and click on the inverted checkbox. If I invert the mask, it affects everything outside of the area I've selected. So now it looks like that flash is happening around him while still making sure the image of him is nice and clear. Masks are a great way to section off different effects just in certain areas of the frame. I know this is a lot to throw at you if you're a beginner, but I hope this gives you some insight into some of the things that you can do with your software without having to buy anybody's templates or overlay packs. It's all about getting creative with these things. So make sure you try them out, try them in your own way, put your own spin on them, and maybe let me know in the comments what kind of stuff that you're doing, what kind of cool stuff you came up with based on some of these ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.